What's up everybody, this is Chris with Coalition Gaming. So uh, just a little update on what's going on with the uh, X79 and workstation project and all that stuff. I have the X79 system built up, that's the one you see right behind me, right here, this one. And I'm currently doing some stress testing right now and uh, trying to settle in on the overclock on it. I've been able to hit 4.6, a little unstably. 4.5 has given me some issues, so I'm playing around with voltages. It's uh, very interesting, needless to say. However, I did bench test it with a GeForce 970, the uh, EVGA For The Win Plus model, with 6 gigs of RAM on that motherboard on the HP Z620 workstation motherboard. Now, that one can't overclock, so it was a lot more straightforward, and I just wanted to show you uh, what kind of benchmarks that put out. So, uh, uh, my own honest review of that is, other than a little issue that I get, and that's this has to do with the sense pins, that are on the board uh, that basically detects some factory stuff that HP, HP motherboards check for well it causes an F1 to boot error no matter what and uh, I, I was able to snuff all those out on a Z4 on the Z400 X58 build that I did but uh, it's a little more complicated on the Z620 slash Z420 build and I won't be able to snuff those out unfortunately which sort of sucks, but you know what, whatever. Pressing F1 to boot on a newer generation board like this shouldn't be a, that big of a deal going forward. Um, as it stands, I'm just gonna just set it aside for now because I got this guy that I'm working on now with that same processor. So I have a board, I have a case, but I don't really have much else to put in that. It has six gigs of RAM. Oh right, that's another caveat with that build. If you do a Z620 or Z420 build is that uh, it pretty much requires ECC RAM to work, but it's not that big a deal because you can get ECC RAM like uh, all over eBay for a relatively good price. I believe I saw ECC DDR3 1600 for a 32 gigabyte kit for like a hundred dollars. That's not terrible. That's about running price, honestly, for DDR3 1600. So uh, this is ECC might be a tad slower in the real world, but nothing you'll notice. And uh, that really is all there is to it. It benchmarked pretty well. It handled games pretty well. Um, it's honestly a pretty strong system. So if you have one of these, or you're looking at one of these to get into as a budget gamer, it's it works great with these uh, with these Xeon processors. You can drop in any i7 you want. That's that's for that uh, socket. Anything that works with X79 will work on the C602 uh, chipset. They they're basically the same chipset. They just one has ECC support and support for a few other things uh, that workstations need, but. Um, like even in device manager it reports x79 slash c602 for one of the uh, hci drivers it's interesting it's interesting but uh yeah overall it's a great performer if you can get one on a budget and you don't mind pressing pressing f1 to boot all the time or rather rather whenever you reboot it honestly i just sleep my computer so once it's on it's never really an issue you know but it's something to think about definitely worthwhile though if you you can get a good cheap processor on there a six core sandy bridge processor that's the xeon E5-1650 goes in there and it just does work. It's a great processor and uh, as I said I'm currently overclocking it on this rig. Uh, 4.5 I think is where it's going to settle at once I get the voltages figured out. And uh, yeah, definitely getting there. And if you end up building a system like that, great. If you don't, that's cool too. Hey. Anyways, this is Chris with Coalition Gaming. If you like this video, click that like button. If you dislike it, click that dislike button. Subscribe for more and I'll see you guys.